Deborah, with her 30 years of being an entrepreneur and creating over seven companies, knows exactly what it means to accept the mission. When you make that decision, when you accept the mission to become a solopreneur, to take yourself and your talents to market, then you embrace a life of not only unlimited possibilities, but also the unknown. It's an elixir of fear and bravery that only someone who's taken the leap really understands. On our show, Deb digs deep with her guests to highlight what you, the listener, wants to know. The stories, the whys, and the hows to navigate the journey to success. Get ready to hear from some of the most incredible mission takers from Generation Z to Boomers. So sit up, perk up, and get ready to be blown away. Now here is your host, Deborah Drummond. Huh? So, seven, and I know that you know that because you're the best audience. And you know what? I'm going to squeeze that in because we have a guest today who also has an incredible audience that she just expanded. But look, before I get there, if you just landed here today because you're like, mission accepted sounds cool. What's this all about? <laughs> well, you, you're going to double, gonna, it's going to double down to you today because not only is that our mandate, but it's also Julie's mandate as well. But listen, if you're here, this is about accepting the mission. What did you do? What do you want to do? How did it happen for you? Right? Was your back against the wall? Did you just, did you go, I surrender? How many people have said, I surrender? <laughs> I had no idea what you were surrendering to. Or finally, the gut feeling got so loud that you were forced to bring it to the forefront and start walking that path inch by inch. Or maybe you just completely jumped into it. That the stories, I mean, as funny as they are and inspiring as they are, are actually someone's life. These people come on here and they're like, this actually happened to them. <laughs> so you're like, woo, right? Anyways, thank you so much. You guys have been sharing. You've been commenting. I had a great call this week from a woman. I'm like, yeah, absolutely. Call me telling me that we are her yoga show. That when she does yoga, she puts on the Mission Accepted podcast and she, you know, doubles down. So that's awesome. Anyways, um, so what am I going to say about you guys today? Because you know, I always call you something good. I'm like, you're the kind of audience that likes to rise up. You're the kind of audience that likes to rise up. You know, it reminds me of that song. You guys know I can't sing, but you know I'm going to, right? Remember that song, like Parachute Club? Rise up, rise, rise up. up. <laughs> okay, that's what you're going to do. You're going to be jigging and jagging with Julie today on Rise Up because she's got an incredible show. You've seen her before. She's the kind of person that you bring back because guess what? She's upped her game. She's upped her game since the last time that you saw Julie, not only was she inspiring others and oh my gosh, <laughs> if you can see her, <laughs> I know some, those of you that are watching the video, you got to watch it if you're just listening to the audio. Oh my gosh, she just had a little surprise there for you. But since we saw you last, Julie, you've added a lot about resilience, rising up, right? And you have expanded your business to include a television show. You now have your own television show. So look, why don't you tell us a little bit for those that don't remember who you are, kind of how you had your rise to the top and share with what you got going on, girl. Woo, that's a loaded question, but I am so <laughs> excited to be back for take two, like, right? Because I just love your energy and I love, you know, your mission and to give everybody a voice because I think that that is really what everybody needs. You know, I, I have been so passionate, that especially this year, in everybody getting their message out there. And so mm -hmm. that's one of the reasons why I started a television show. And I started that back in, oh gosh, last year, 2022. Like I went <laughs> for my first taping in August and season one released November of 2022. And it seems like it's always been part of my journey. So that's why like I had to sit there and think for a second, like, Gosh, it hasn't even been a year that, you know, I've been out there <laughs> making a <television laughs> show happen. I'm like, I don't know. It's like time really doesn't wait for anyone. But, you know, the, the premise of the show is giving people a voice, a, a bigger platform to share that they have not let obstacles and challenges stop them in their pursuit of creating a life of their dreams. So it's all about resilience. People who have been knocked down over and over and over again, and they continue to rise up. They rise up loud. It's like, you know, I have a saying, live life out loud, because that's what it's about. Like, don't let anybody hold you back. Don't let anybody tell you that what you have to say isn't important. And if they are telling you that, then you need to talk to either Deb or I, because <laughs> we'll get you on one of our shows to go ahead and voice what you have to say. 
Julie, let's unpack that for a little bit. And um, I can imagine that it must feel like just an extension to you that you've been doing it forever because you are that person that does the long, you're, you're the long game. You're the long game, right? And so things just organically happen and it feels like we've been doing it forever because I think the premise of your mission has always been to help encourage and get other people to stand up and do something amazing, which you have you have done. But let's unpack that a little bit. So when other people tell us or other people make impression or our community or environment around us hasn't let us rise up, right? Then what's going on for people on the inside? Like, I know that you like to unpack that a little bit because sometimes it's not other people. It might have been other people when we were young, a teenager, a this or that, married to him, married to her, whatever it is. But we get left with some stuff. How do we rise up when part of us wants to go here, forward, and part of us stays here? Like, what's, you know, what's that about? Listen, it happens to all of us. That's what I'm going to say first and foremost, right? Because as many times as I've taken steps forward, I have gotten knocked down and, you know, thrown backwards and maybe thrown backwards quite a bit far. And it's just the decision that I make all the time that, okay, I'm not going to let that stop me. And I call it stinking thinking is what I call it, right? Like we let these stories that we somehow believe about ourselves become part of who we are, right? So when I, a lot of times when I talk to people, if you ever see the word belief, B-E-L-I-E-F, right? And I always ask people, okay, what's the word you see within belief? I get B, I get, you know, like all kinds of words that people see, but the one word that they often miss is the word lie, L-I-E. See, beliefs are lies that we have told ourselves and we believe them to be true. See, we believe them to be true. So something happens to us as we're growing up and then we believe that about ourselves and then somehow we start attracting all these other instances in our lives. And it's not somehow, it's our subconscious. Our subconscious all of a sudden is designed to protect us. So it starts finding stories and situations to make that set in stone. So what do I mean by that? Okay. So when I was younger, I was told by my father, if you're going to cry, I'll give you something to cry about. And he believed in, you know, spanking. Right. And so like, if I knew that if I cried, I was going to get it even worse. And so to me, I didn't know this at the time, but it taught me that crying is a sign of weakness and don't cry to show your emotions. So what did that lead to? It led to two failed marriages because every time that I was about to get into a situation where I was going to get emotional, I would shut down. So my my you know ex-husbands, they didn't know how I was feeling. And then all of a sudden I would explode and they're like, what is going on? You've been telling me everything is fine. But it wasn't because I wasn't sharing my true emotions. The other thing that it did, and I'm I'm thoroughly convinced of this, it led me into a law enforcement field. It led me into that field because you have to be stoic. Like you cannot show your emotions in law enforcement. And I was a great police officer and I learned a lot of lessons from that that I now carry with me today. That wasn't what I was designed to do. That wasn't my purpose in life. But I was drawn to that profession to keep that belief, you know, it within me. Mm-hmm. There. Don't cry because that is a sign of weakness. I think there's a lot of people that can relate to that. And that's what I mean by by unpacking it. We all have our look, two people can have the same situation happen and come out of it with two different views. I mean, that's the interesting part of it as well, right? Someone can have something and it doesn't feel like trauma. That thing can happen to someone else and it traumatizes them forever and changes their future. One of the biggest aha moments that I had of that was when me and my brother had a conversation about what it was like to live in the same house. He was talking and I literally out of my mouth go, I go, where were you living? Like, where were you living? Like, what are you talking about? And so I told him my perspective and he's like, uh, I don't think so. And um, so it was very interesting that two people in the same house could even have two completely different, you know, ways of viewing it and going off into the world and 
as much as my brother and I lived in the same house and we have some similarities like comedy and how, you know, what we like to do like Jerry Lewis, we live two very different lives. Very interesting. Right. So well, yeah. I did. And just to that point, my brother and I are very different as well. We're really good friends. We talk almost every day, every other day. We're always checking in with each other, but we are as different as night and day. Like I'm the adventurous one. He's not so adventurous. You know, like he worked for like 20 years at a job and, you know, he didn't like it for a while. And it took him a lot to like leave and go and do something else. And here's me. Okay. That's a great idea. Let's <laughs> run with it. <laughs> you know, for everything I say yes to, he's probably saying no to. Yeah. Yeah. No, true, 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 true. So um, look, your, your energy and your excitement for life is a little contagious. So I can hear my listeners going, what's next? What's next? What's, you know, how can I have that? And and how can people have that? Like straight up, how can people start to design? Like, how did you design this life? Did you, how did you know what to say yes to? Like when you think about designing what you've got in front of you and how you get to platform from that, I mean, you were an entrepreneur where well, you were in the forces, right? And mm -hmm. to venture out. So let's go back a little bit from going from the forces, venturing out into your first aspect of your business. Was there something that you can share with the audience that um, made that possible for you? Well, the catalyst behind it was was twofold. So when I was in law enforcement and I was not a police officer back in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and then I moved out here to Arizona 21 years ago, and I had every intention of going back into law enforcement. Like that was what I knew and I was good at it. However, my mom was diagnosed at the age of 59 from early onset Alzheimer's. And two years later, she passed at 59. Now that did, it opened my eyes, I guess, to the fact that two things happened. My mom died with her dreams going to the grave, as well as my dad, who was still alive. But now he had lost everything when my mother passed because they were of the age and the generation that said, you wait till retirement. Like we live a life when we retire. And again, when you retire or you wait, you don't know what is going to happen. See, we all have an expiration date. We don't know when that is. Like the hardest thing I had to do as a police officer was give death notifications, tell people that their loved ones weren't coming home. So when I lost my mom and then 30 days later, I lost my grandmother. So two strong, influential females in my life, you know, I dropped down into depression. I had to go on antidepressants, but I was very clear on one thing. I was not dying with my dreams going to the grave. And what was I going to do? And see, we don't do this journey alone. And if you're out there thinking like you can do this alone or make these decisions alone, the one thing I will tell you is you got to find a tribe. You have to find a group of people to link arms with and go for it. It didn't happen for me overnight. I still won't have it all figured out, quite honestly. Like, but I'm, but I've started to overcome a lot of the fears and the belief in myself now is so strong. But it didn't start that way. Like I've been on this entrepreneurial journey for 20 years. And mm -hmm. so if you're listening to me now, you know, sometimes people see people and whether or not it's you, Deb, it's me, it's celebrities, people think that like success is overnight and it's not, it's not a destination and it's a journey. And I know it's an overused cliche, but it's really the case because I have setbacks all the time. I've just learned to deal with those setbacks quicker because of all of like the classes and the learning, I'm a lifelong learner. You know, everything that I've done has led me to this point and I continue to learn and I continue to grow and I have coaches and I have an amazing tribe of people that help lift me up when I may be, you know, fallen down. Mm -hmm. I mean, touche, touche. And I think that when people, people don't have, I think what can make people upset or feel like they don't have it yet is the time frame. So really, thank you so much for sharing that it's been a 20 year journey. Um, because most of us, when they, when you talk about overnight success, I think people are tolerant around two, three years <laughs> and when's it right. Okay. Right. I mean, and look at, I relate like, you know, sometimes I start things and do things and I'm like, 
I even to this day, after 30 years, think, God, that should happen a little quicker. But there's an inside person that knows that just, you know, walk the path, listen, listen to your, you know, your music in the morning and your stuff and just, you know, put one foot in front of the other sister. Um, but I think I think people look, I've said this in the newness of you guys taking your mission. Right. There's an exhilaration that's addicting. It is so great. It is so exhilarating. And I think that's why we continue to change and add to our business because there's a there's a zest that happens with newness. But when you get to that place where you're in the trudge, like you're breaking your belief systems, you're changing neuronal pathways, you're looking at other people that you don't think are going through the inside journey. I always say don't compare your outsides to other people's insides. You have no idea what everybody goes through. And so I always say the messages sometimes that we share on these shows is not for the new person as much as it is for the, I case I say the trudge person when you're kind of in it and you're, and because we want to get to that next level, which means when you say that, ah, then you start to get tested a little bit, stay through the tests. And I know that when you share that, that there's been definitely some tests. Well, there have been, and you know, like I, be, because I, I really truly um, have as my number one value integrity, like walk the walk and talk the talk. I do not like help, you know, coach anybody on something that I myself have not done or I'm not willing to do like that is really key to me. And I remember, so in um, November of 2021, my husband and I were at a wedding and he had a massive seizure and actually died the paramedics were called, he was resuscitated, he spent five days in the hospital. And it was only about 10 days before I was going to release my first book, Stop Waiting, Start Living. And I had a choice, a big choice, because like, I was dealing with a lot of medical stuff, like I didn't know what was going to happen, I was stressed to the max. And I got a call from my publisher, and she said, do you want to put this on hold? And it didn't take me long to make the decision. And the decision was no, like, this is something that I've been doing. And if I'm going to put a book out that says, stop waiting, start living. I had to follow my own advice. Like I had to, for the integrity of myself, the book and everything else, plus not even knowing what was going to happen with my husband, but I knew he would want me to do the same. Cause this had been a big goal of mine. See, I didn't ever, ever believe that I was a writer. I didn't believe mm. that I had something to say that people were going to want to read. But like when I had finally the courage to put my book together and put my book out there, I was like, I'm not doing anything at this moment that's going to stop that. Because I really believe that God, the universe, whatever you believe in, right, will still throw obstacles even at the last minute to see if you're really, truly clear on the path that you are pursuing. Nobody oh, said life was going to be easy, like, you know, but it can be fun and it's what you make of it. Right. And there are moments when it's going to be easy and when it's not, it's like, okay, who can I call in for support? Like who's going to, who are my people? You know, mm -hmm. everybody's got that tribe of people that, you know, if you were in jail at two o'clock in the morning, you could come and they'd come and bail you out. Like we, and if you don't, I always tell people there's always room in my tribe for more people. Yeah. Touche, touche. Very, that's, um, wow, very interesting. Very interesting. It's the perspective, right? It's the perspective of what we see happening to us in that moment or that time or that week. It's how we're choosing to look at it. And I love that you say that sometimes, I mean, right before you make that change or you've made that change and it's like right before the performance, right before the TV show, right before the red light goes on, right before you get ready to go into the plane, right before, right before, right before. And, and that stinking thinking or that test can happen. I remember listening to Brene Brown talk about the first time she was on her way to go see Oprah and she got into the plane and she could barely get into the plane and I shouldn't leave my son and all the things that she went through till she got on the plane and then she got on the plane and maybe I shouldn't and blah, blah, blah. And the plane's running late and this is a sign. And she literally called her husband and said, this is it. I know what I'm going to die. I'm going to die. going to die on this plane. I'm on my way to see Oprah. I'm going to die. The plane's never going to make it. And I should be home picking up Timmy or Tommy or whatever it was. Right. And he's like, you're crazy. And she was so crazy that the person sitting beside her said to her, do you, do you want a drink? Like, would you like me to get you a drink? And the plane hadn't even gone off the tarmac. 
Yeah, right? I mean, here she is just about to go do whatever it is that one does when they go meet Oprah. And she was like convinced having a meltdown on the plane so that a stranger said, would you like some alcohol? <laughs> right? That's that story reminds me of. But look, look, if you guys, you, if you haven't heard Julie before, and I think you're getting a sense of Julie, she's going to come speak. And you guys already know about the stand up, speak up, show up. And she's going to be speaking on stage very soon at that. She's also going to be in the book, the 262 mission book. She has a TV show. You have your own podcast. Look, speaking to the degree that you speak and with with the proficiency and profoundness of what you say, what would you say to someone that has not or wants to speak, get onto their first kind of stages? I mean, you're out there, girl. You're out there. And what do you go through before you get out there? What can they do to be more comfortable being seen? couple of things like you know dropped in as you were asking me that question first and foremost ask ask for what you want if you don't ask you don't get and if you don't know the path that you are to take there are so many people that have gone before you that will help you I, you know, I mentor people on speaking all the time and you know when it comes to speaking I often tell people especially with their audience your audience doesn't know what they don't know like you're the expert on the on that message and it can only be delivered by you. So whatever you say is going to be perfect in that moment. And I know for introverts, you're like, oh, my God, this woman is crazy because I, you know, like I break into a sweat just at the thought of like talking in front of an audience. Right. But it's taking the first step. It's always about taking action. You know, Mel Robbins wrote a book and I'm sure that you know it. It's like, you know, the five second rule. Right. You, a thought comes into your mind. You have less than five seconds to act upon that. Otherwise, it's just a passing thought. It's all about taking the action. It's stepping into the fear, right? I mean, it's not an easy place to be again. But like often I tell people, go to worst case scenario. Like what's the worst case scenario that can happen? And if it's not death, because they say that public speaking is like the number one fear. Come on, it's really death. You know, it's like, you know, but if it's not death, then like, just, you know, find somebody that's going to help you to figure it out. There are so many people out there. There's so much free information. There's so much free content. And there are so many people like you, Deb, like me, that have a heart to help and serve. We're not going to give it away forever. But at the same token, too, it's like, just reach out. I've always got at least 30 minutes, you know, to give to you to see, you know, all the different ideas, all the different things that you can, you know, that you can do. See, because mm -hmm. that's the problem. And you know, I, you know, I love these glasses too, right? <laughs> yeah, I do. You guys I, that are listening to audio, you've got to tune into this. Yeah, just get some groove. All right. So the reason I'm known for my googly eyed glasses and I, and, you know, because it's all, not only fun, but it makes a point. See, we all have a perspective, right? And we're so stuck in our perceptions and our blinders. And there are people out there like Deb, myself, other coaches, other experts that are able to look at you from a 360 degree view. We're able to see things for you that's not possible. Where I always, always have like a million solutions for any given problem. There's an infinite amount of solutions for anything you're facing. And that's why, again, I get on this bandwagon about people sharing their story because there is somebody out there listening and saying to themselves, oh, that's great for everybody but me. Like, I, I there is no one for me. Trust me. Everybody has, like, somebody's out there. We've all been through something. Like, you know, I mean, I am, you know, almost 15 months into sobriety, right? Like, I mean, I have lived a life where, you know, a lot of things that happen that I'm not too proud of always happen when I was drinking. And so when I made the decision for me, that it was the best, ver I wanted to be the best version of me, that meant leaving alcohol behind. And it's been the best decision that I've ever made, right? However, it's like, so I, yeah, so if you're listening in, yes, yes, I'm an alcoholic, right? And so there are other people out there listening, thinking that they're the only one you know, we all have demons, we all have baggage, we all have something hidden in our closet. So it's like, that's why I get passionate about being an open book, sharing what it is. So like, if you're out there listening, 
you know, like you'll have at least one person, me, Julie Jones, <laughs> uh, you know, is in your corner. You're, you know, we're not alone in this journey. We were not designed to be alone in this journey. And I really can't stress that enough because I really have heard the message loud and clear this year. It's connection over content. We lost so much during the pandemic and mm. people are craving, like really craving the idea of like how to connect more heart to heart, not surface. Like let's really get into some deep, you know, discussions and deep relationships and stop doing everything so surfacely. Yeah. Touche. Touche. It's, um, and like when you say 360 degrees, I've been doing a lot of mom knows best lately because my son's 19 and launching his first company and he did his first TV live interview. And for three days, all I heard is, I don't want to go mom. I don't, I'm like, I know. Talk to you tomorrow. I know. Pick you up at 11. I know. And that's what you need, whatever it is, whether it's getting on stage or whatever it is, it's like having someone that can listen to you, hear you and push you forward anyways. And, you know, there's, there's tools, there's people like that's why coaches are needed. And, you know, I got him a speech coach and that's all great. And rehearsing lines before, like no one says you have to go into this blind. You don't, you know, if you go on to Julie's TV show, you're not going to show up in your clothes that you got there in, you're going to like shake it off. You're going to run some lines. You're going to go through the conversation, you know, maybe rehearse them for a week or two before you go. Right? I mean, you know, you can also be prepared, like getting prepared is where probably your coach comes in the most. And, um, you know, having someone that's going to go, yeah, do it anyways. Okay. We're going right up to the time we walked in the door. He's like, I don't want to go. I'm like, uh huh, I know. Christine may introduce you to Ocean. Ocean introduce you to Christine, you know, <laughs> right? So if you have someone like that, um, just like Julie said, and she's got a tribe waiting for you. Look, um, you're not the kind of woman that I'm going to ask, what is it something about you we don't know? Because you are an open book and you have absolutely shared. But what's something that's on your bucket list? I mean, what is someone who has a TV show, a booming career, um, expansion of life um, have on her bucket list? I'm actually have a clear intention that I'll be speaking in Madrid, Spain in November. And there's a conference. I'm a, a part of a BNI and there's a BNI international um, conference and I've put it out. My name's already been submitted. And so like, I, I love to travel. So like for me, it's about traveling and sharing my message around the world. Right. Because again, we're, so many people are going through the same thing. It doesn't matter if we all don't speak English, we're in a different culture, you know, wherever it is, like, I really want to share that message with the world. And I also want to have an animal rescue ranch, an animal rescue ranch with, um, you know, any kind of, you know, rescued animals, like animals that are not wanted. But the premise behind it will be to bring children that are also unwanted you know, like in the foster care system that they can come and learn about unconditional love at my animal rescue ranch. Oh, see, you know, this is what I love about when I ask people to say what is on their bucket list, because this is how it works, people. I was just talking to an incredible woman yesterday. You know, she's a colleague of mine who's writing her book, Drive to Rescue. Mm. And it is about animal rescue. Of course it is. Now her love is dogs. And as we were talking and the five of them were, you know, da, 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 she just, she lives in Washington, got on a plane and flew to, to Texas, said to her husband, I'm going to Texas. I'm bringing back five dogs. <laughs> He's like, she's like, please stay married to me. And she brought all these dogs home and she's writing a book called drive to rescue. Um, so you guys gotta, you know, you gotta, you gotta lock arms. That's how this works. Okay, look, I have a special little question for you that I'm keeping. But before we do that, before we wrap up, look, you guys, I've already told you where you can see Julie on our platforms. But Julie, where can people reach you one? And is there any final message that you want to share to anyone that's listening, taking the mission, thinking about taking the mission? What's your what's your last message for us today? So the easiest way to connect with me is juliejones.biz, B-I-Z. I'm the one and only. <laughs> And, you know, and, the, and I'm sure that, you know, the information will be in the show notes and you can connect with me on all different social media platforms. And if you go to that website, you can find everything as well. My, my message is this, which goes along with mission accepted. I 
believe that all of us were put on this earth with a purpose. And I know I said this before, but I, I, I think this is bears repeating. You have a purpose and a message that only can be delivered by you. And it doesn't matter whether you get on stages or whether you're in your own community sharing your truth and sharing that message because it has a ripple effect. See, I'm all about kindness these days. We've lost that somewhere along the line. Like people are angry. And, you know, si simple things like making eye contact, saying hello, giving someone a smile, instead of having our phones in, or, you know, our, he our head down in technology and in our phones all the time, like just put technology away for a while and see how you can connect again heart to heart. Don't be afraid to share your message. You know, like even if you only say it once, you don't know how many people it's going to impact. And you may never know, but someday you will. Very cool. Okay, girl, you're, um, we're going to hold that thought for you about going and being on stage at the International BNI Conference, November 2023. Italy, right? Spain. Spain. Okay, Spain. Yeah. Spain. Hola, hola, hola. Okay, <laughs> so here's my last question. So your second trip is you're on your way to a desert island. It's you and you. You got one suitcase, and that's it, girl. Off you go. Now, in that suitcase, you're going to pack one album. What is the album you take with you that you could not imagine not listening to for the rest of your days? Oh, that's a really good question. And I'm going to go with, just because it brings back a lot of memories, Bon Jovi's first album. And the reason for that is that I bugged my parents so much. You know, like I had heard it at my cousin's house. I fell in love with it. Like that was all I could talk about at that time that I wanted for a Christmas gift. And I was so excited when I opened it up and I got that album. And to this day right now, like when I got myself, you know, record players kind of came back and I got myself mm -hmm. a little record player in the house. The first album that I got myself again was the Bon Jovi one. Nice. That's incredible. That's incredible. I, I, I mean, I'm a vinyl fan. You know, I love music. And we're doing this walk across Ireland to raise money for the music community because, man, that vibration heals. That vibration heals. Um, look, I want to say thank you for coming on. I don't want you to hang up yet. I got something special for you after the show. Look, you guys, you are amazing. You know the deal. You know, um, you call, you share, you rock out this show. And we're so grateful because you already heard Julie's message. But um, by doing that, you share the word. And we're so grateful for that. If you want to be where Julie is, you know, deb at debdrummond.com. This is not difficult, people. <laughs> you can contact, you can be where she is, and you can be sharing exactly what she was sharing about, and that's your message. So just reach out and come on the show. We have the largest International Women's Day event going on. We have 22 summits. It is for women and men. There is men that come on. There is women that come on. Women speaking, sharing the word of what they're doing, their passion, their project tap into that i can tell you it's a one-time project that's lasting two years so <laughs> get on you know get on the train get on the train because gosh knows what we're going to be doing after those two years thank you so much for listening you guys be well stay groovy we'll be talking again in another few days and julie thank you so much for coming on mission accepted oh thank you all right guys bye for now